Welcome to Imaginits. Welcome to Imaginits Elevate event. This recording is based around reality capture workflows for as built. During this video, we'll talk about data collection, data processing, and CloudWorks for Revit. Data collection can be done by using any number of devices. Tape measure, cell phone, yes, believe it or not, there is a LiDAR scanner in the iPhone now. For purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to talk about HDS laser scanners and handheld imaging scanners. Beginning with the BLK360, which can scan up to 360,000 points per second and complete a full dome scan in about three minutes. Using this scanner, we can easily get enough data to do a floor analysis. Then there's the RTC360, which collects up to 2 million points per second and completes a full dome scan in less than two minutes. This scanner is also capable of completing a, re a full registration with very little user input. If we require a scanner that is capable of collecting data at a larger distances and tighter tolerances than the other two already mentioned, there is the P-Series scanner. All of these scanners are a fantastic choice to get the data needed for floor flatness. However, sometimes even the fastest of these scanners just take too long for some project requirements. That's why there's a scanner like the blk to go This handheld scanner scans as the user walks the site at a slow pace and collects points and images. While it is not as accurate as the others I mentioned, it is a much faster solution. After creating several individual scans, the data needs to be stitched together or registered. As we collect scans, they register to another scan until the project is completed. Once completed, the data can be cleaned up if you desire, but if we are using one of the scanners I mentioned earlier, we often don't need to spend a lot of time doing that to recreate as-built data. If you've ever worked with point cloud data inside Revit, you know there aren't a lot of tools for as-built drawings. Leica's CloudWorks application solves a lot of these problems. As you can see, CloudWorks is installed on top of Revit and supplies us with a bunch of wonderful tools to help us deal with point cloud data inside Revit. Before I begin showing how to extract that as-built data, let's talk a little bit about licensing. CloudWorks needs its own license to run inside Revit. That license can be installed on a local machine or on a server if you, if you desire. Each time CloudWorks opens a point cloud, it pulls that license from the license server. Let's also answer the question, what version of Revit do you need to run CloudWorks on top of Revit? Any version from the 2017 to the 2021 version can be used with CloudWorks. To use a point cloud inside CloudWorks, I'm going to begin by choosing to use the OpenLGS tool. This will allow me to load my point cloud into Revit. This point cloud has millions of points and it was loaded very, very quickly. Being able to extract data can often be difficult, difficult with point cloud data because as you can see, I have a very large point cloud. And there are times when I only want to work within a small space. CloudWorks solves this problem by allowing us to clip the point cloud with a variety of clipping tools. Here, I'm going to use a box fence 
and clip a small area. The rest of the point cloud is hidden while I can now come in and work with only the data that I'd like to work with. Cloudworks has tools known as fitters that allow us to extract data from the point cloud. In this case, I'm going to use the point cloud to extract a wall. I'll use the fit wall tool, use a pick point, and tell it to go from my Revit level 1 to Revit level 2. And I want this to be a finished face interior. And I'm going to go ahead and click, and then simply click one time on my point cloud. Cloudworks returns a dialog box and asks me what type of wall I'd like to place at that location. I'll choose my wall type and click OK. With my wall now in place, I can take a look and see what Revit gave me. Using my wall, I can then use other tools with inside Cloudworks to extract other items such as windows and doors. I'll begin by selecting the window tool, telling it I want to use it by fence which will allow me to select the wall and then draw a rectangle around the window. I'll create a window type specifically for that window and click OK. As you can see the window is now placed in the correct location. And of course, the same goes for the door. With that data now extracted, I can continue looking at other walls. If you're looking to do data on a much larger scale than one wall at a time, we can do that as well. To begin, I'll use my clipping tools to bring back the data that I hid. From here, I'm going to look at the point cloud in 3D, and I'm going to look at two walls so I can cut a very thin slice and get a floor plan view of the overall point cloud. I'm going to do that by selecting the lines tool and saying quick slice, and I can pick one wall. and then the other. It looks like my point clouds disappeared. However, when I do a zoom extents, I can see the entire cloud. I'm then going to take and use only a small portion of this space. Using this smaller space, I'm going to then decide that I want to start drawing out where the walls might go. I'm going to use the two-point polyline tool where I can just simply click on each wall that I want to use. 
I'm going to use the two point polyline tool and I'm going to select two points on each wall I'd like to create. From there, I'll simply end the command and once again tell the software I'd like to go from level 1 to level 2 and pick the type of wall I'd like to use. I can then use my Revit commands to do any adjusting I might like to accomplish. And as I spin this into 3D, we can see that the object created are, in fact, Revit objects. Now you might notice that there's a column here in the center of the space. If I'd like to model that column as well, there's a tool for cl in Cloudworks for that. In my command, I'll go to Cloudworks, do a box fence, and just simply pull out just that wall. I'll then clear my other clippings, so I'm looking at just that column. From here, I can use my fitter tools once again, select the column, where I can come in and once again specify any settings I might need, click OK, and pick on the column. Once completed, I now have a modeled column. Now, in order to make this look a little better, uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete these objects. And I'm going to go back to my Clipping Manager and unclip everything. And then I'm going to use an actual Z-axis clip so just so I can see down inside the space. and decide if I'd like to model any other types of objects. We can see here in this space there's a series of pipes. Now if I'd like to model this piping I can come to the fitters once again choose the pipe tool, select any pipe type I might want to use its segment, what level it's on, and what its system type is. And I can click OK, pick on the pipe. The software will figure out the diameter of the pipe and give me a series of options to choose from. As you can see under its diameter deviation, it will tell me the deviation from the actual pipe size to what it's going to create. I have center line of pipe and I can continue on creating more pipe. Once completed I can choose where the end of the pipe might be if I need to, I might pull these back a little bit. And then I can use Cloudworks to connect those systems. I can put in whatever radius I'd like, or I can accept the default 
and as you can see an elbow was placed. If that elbow doesn't fit the way you would like, of course, we can always do an undo and rerun the command. So we can change the radius. Of course, this also means we can select point cloud data in any view we want. For example, this 3D view and this pipe. And then, of course, use the Connect Systems button to bring our data together. can also customize the center radius ratio. From here, we can continue on doing the rest of the building. Thank you for attending this session today.